notice how I'm not cutting everything up ahead of time? It's like I start with the first ingredient I need, I throw it in there, and then I'm while that's kind of working, I'm cutting the next ingredient. And I can kind of ease up on my heat, slow things down if I need to, if I can't keep up. But you want to feed the kitty here. You want to keep those ingredients moving through and stay ahead of whatever it is in your pan, okay? I'm going to give it another little toss. Just my flame, and I just got my flame on about, uh, it's probably about five out of 10, okay? We're just cruising nice and easy. And I'm grabbing my little wooden spoon, okay? A wooden spoon is a, an essential tool in the kitchen. I can't, I can't say it enough, ladies and gentlemen, wooden spoon, it's the most underappreciated tool in the kitchen. You need one of these if you don't have a good little wooden spoon. Doesn't have to be one like this. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Now, another flavor that I'm going to work into my pilaf here, classic French, you know, uh, uh, flavor profile, is a bay leaf, okay? So far, it's been garlic, then it was onion, a little celery, and I have some thyme in there, and now I'm throwing in three bay leaves. I count them when they're going in, and I count them when they're coming out, okay? And that way, I never lose a bay leaf. I know where they are at all times. I don't want to have to put out an APB. Give it another little stir. I think uh, uh, in this particular dish, I think I will use some black pepper for this uh, particular flavor profile, that French stuff. I'm going to work a little in right now, and I'll probably work some in right at the end as well. But this is going to be part of that base layer of flavor that I'm working in. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Let me work that in. And my vegetables are, are, are getting translucent. You guys all hear those those um, descriptions of the vegetables getting transparent or translucent when we're doing sweating. That's what I'm looking for. What I really need to do is I need to cook the moisture out of these veggies before I throw the rice in there. Very important, if I just throw rice in there before you, throw the, before you cook those, uh, the, the liquid out, I gotta, I gotta do this, sorry. I'm still getting used to camera work here. If you throw that rice in while the veggies are still all moist and kicking out moisture, your rice is going to gum up in there, okay? So we cook all this moisture out till it's pretty dry, and those veggies, almost like I said earlier, almost disappear, and then I'm going to work that rice in to start toasting. I may have to add a little more fat to this. I think I'm getting pretty close here, actually. I'm going to go ahead and start working in my rice. When, when you guys are cooking with me, I rarely, rarely measure stuff, unless I'm doing some baking or unless I'm making rice pilaf. So with rice, depending on the grain, um, you need a certain ratio of liquid to that grain. I'm using brown rice today, just a brown short grain rice, and um, this particular rice needs about a two to one ratio for um, steaming or, or doing a pilaf, okay? So if I'm putting in, I'm gonna put in two cups of uh, rice here. I'm gonna need four cups of liquid, okay? I think what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna do a cup and a half of rice and three cups of liquid. I think that's what I'll do today. So in goes one cup of rice, and then I'm just gonna do another half cup. And there she is. Now, I said a second ago you want enough fat to coat these rice grains. I need to toast them and get a little bit of color on them. I don't want too high of a heat. I don't want rocket fuel. This isn't 10 out of 10. I'm probably gonna be on about seven out of 10, but let me get a little more fat in there. Some of that duck fat. It's got a taste that can't be beat. Okay, I'm gonna get that rice coated with fat. If your rice starts getting really dark really fast, you need fat in there, okay? You don't want it dry. It needs to be a little shiny looking. Again, we're talking pilaf method here. That thyme is getting knocked around in there. It's, it's giving off flavor as it goes. Um, I haven't really worked much salt into this rice. Remember I said we want to do the seasoning early? I may as well start working salt in early. So I just put in a goodly amount of salt and we are going to start looking into the liquid next while this starts toasting. To toast this rice, I don't want to stir it constantly. I need to let it sit for about a minute, a minute and a half, 
and then I will stir it. If I sit here stirring constantly, it's going to take forever to get any color on it, okay? So I have been talking for about a minute or a minute and a half. I'm going to give it a little toss. You can do it like so when you get, when you get used to that, okay? Or you can just use your spoon and just let it roll. Check your heat. And again, I'm looking for about five out of 10 here, maybe six, okay? Uh, we are going for color on this rice. Nice, even color. Let me grab some liquid for our pilaf. Now, uh, the other day, I did a class on short ribs and I had a bunch of um, uh, veggies that I strained out of the short ribs and things like that. And I put them on in, into a pot with some chicken bones and some veggies that I've been saving. And uh, I made a stock out of that. And so I've got a stock right here. It's got a little bit of fat on the surface. And I don't mind a little fat on the surface because I can always kind of harvest that and use that for cooking purposes. So let me give you a little shot of that. And I'm going to stir my uh, pot here. You guys see that uh, pilaf going? It's starting to snap, crackle, pop a little bit. It's gonna get a little bit of toasty, mysterious goodness as it goes. It's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna ease up on the heat a little bit and we're gonna talk about this stock right here. If you'll notice, I've got a fat cap on the surface of this and I like to have that, um, I like to leave that fat on there because the next day I can go in there and I can harvest that fat cap and use those fats for other purposes. So I'm gonna get a little dish and I'm gonna pull that fat off. And I'm just gonna use my hand. I hope this doesn't gross anybody out. But boom, there's one big giant piece of it right there, and it's so easy to get off, right? And it, uh, everything underneath is completely fat-free. Hey, boom, there's the rest of my, my fat, you know? Um, yeah, I think it's all off of there. And uh, basically, you, uh, you get a fat-free stock that way. That, that is, in my opinion, the best way to get the fat off of your broths and stocks, if you're into that sort of thing. Let me give this another little toss. And I think I'm getting pretty close to being toasted here. Let me just kind of uh, wipe up a hand here. And we're going to give it a little look. But first, that's cool. So there is my rice. It has definitely changed color. It's about a half shade darker than it was when it started. So I'm feeling pretty good. Now I put in one and a half cups of rice. And uh, I had mentioned that we want to, uh, um, we want to have double the liquid in there. Sorry, sorry, getting a little uh, brain fart there. So uh, I need three cups of liquid for this rice. And I will admit to you, folks, I'll admit to you fine people, that I actually fudge a little bit and I always kick in just a little extra pinch to grow an inch here, okay? So I'm gonna work in two cups right now. I owe three cups to the pot. Ideally, this would be hot already, but uh, but it's not. It's I've got a lot of surface here. This is going to be hot in seconds here. And then I need another full cup. Let me uh, get the camera on this. Another full cup. So there it is. And then an extra pinch to grow an inch, okay? I just threw in a little bit of extra liquid. I got to say, we're working with whole grains here, okay? And those whole grains, they take a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of moisture and a lot of energy to get to the center of the grain to make it soft enough to eat, okay? So uh, I, I add a little bit of extra liquid there. Right now, I'm going to crank my uh, fire all the way up to 11, okay? It's uh, uh, getting a blast of rocket fuel. I'm uh, cleaning things up. At this point, what I want to do is stir up my concoction here, okay? And I'm gonna test my stock. Earlier I said I want this to be seasoned in the beginning. I kinda want an idea of where we are right now. And again, I want it a little bit overly seasoned here because I've got a lot of rice to season up. The rice is gonna triple in size. No way, I need more. So we're tasting it before it's even coming up. Right now the fire's underneath there and I'm bringing it up to the boil and then it's gonna go down to a simmer. I just threw in extra salt. Now I'm gonna get another spoon and I'm gonna use this spoon for tasting, the one I just used, and then this is gonna be a clean one. The one in my right hand is always clean. 
Okay. I've got, I started out, I started out with oil. I added garlic, sliced garlic, right? And I sweated that out a little bit. Um, I added onion to that. I added celery to that. And I sweated those vegetables out. Uh, I threw in thyme and bay leaf. Um, and, uh, uh, and then I added rice. Once it was all sweated out, I added rice to it. Um, I toasted that rice until it was a beautiful golden color. And then I added a flavorful liquid that will soak into the rice. Um, I added enough seasoning for a tripling of the rice. And now I'm bringing it up to a boil. Um, I will put a lid on it and then take it down to a simmer and it's just gonna cruise low and slow on a back burner until the grains absorb all. This um, whole grain here, this brown rice here, will probably take about 30 minutes or so, okay? So again, we're um, waiting for this to come up. Throw out some questions. I see lots of people waving. I sure appreciate that. Let's get a lid and get this thing up to heat. Boom, got a lid. Let's get one of these. Have a sip from the happy cup, because it is happy hour, as happy as we can get, guys. Um, I got to say, this is the happiest time of the week for me, when I can get out with you good people and, and share a little bit about cooking. I hope you guys are enjoying. I hope you guys are getting something out of this stuff. Um, I just laid out basic pilaf technique 101. Why is this important? Because pilaf is the base for, hey, you guys like paella? It starts like a pilaf. Think about it. Uh, you know, you got a bunch of veggies and meats and things, or I'm sorry, you got a bunch of uh, uh, animals and meats and seafood and stuff in there, but you just get all that sweated out and then start a rice pilaf, basically, right? Um, what about Mexican rice? At every Mexican restaurant in the world, you know, I wound up working in San Antonio, Texas, where I was, I had to make Mexican rice every day of my life, right? It's basically Basically pilaf technique, right? It's got tomato and cumin and chili powder and all that good stuff, but but that's what you're looking at, right? Um, jambalaya, dirty rice, um, uh, Cuban black beans and rice, you know, all of this stuff starts with, with, with pilaf method. This is a Middle Eastern technique, right? So there are several Middle Eastern pilafs out there as well. Um, just about any flavored rice dish, curry rice, you name it, it's it's all pilaf method. Um, uh, and, and again, you just we just laid it out twice for you, okay? I'm still waiting for this guy to come up. He's just hitting the boil. I never did take a little sip of my little guy here. Let's do that. Lots of thumbs up, people. Lots of thumbs up. All right. Scott Durbinet, I see you there. I know this stuff sounds familiar to you. Okay, brother? I know you remember this stuff. You better believe. So... Very important here, I don't want to boil all my liquid away. So now I'm going to kick this to a back burner. Very, very low and slow. It's the smallest burner I got. And it's going to go back there and I'm just going to get a, a, a nice simmer. But the, it needs to be a simmer with the lid on. So i got to kind of keep an eye on it, see what it looks like now. Boy, it's going pretty heavy right now. So I think I'll turn that down. And uh, we'll wait for a second. We'll check it again. Um, it just has to be perfect, okay? Um, uh, uh, everything just has to be perfect and it's that easy guys. Um, another thing I always said was, uh, you know, I, Hey, cooking is easy. All you got to do is remember everything all the time. Right. And, and then it's easy. Right. Uh, but, but that's kind of true when this stuff starts becoming second nature to you, that's when cooking does become easy and you can walk into a kitchen and open up a pantry and see what's in there and cook something. Right. Um, uh, uh, this is one reason why what we talk about today, what I'm going through today, we're getting ready to get into saute. A lot of this stuff is going to sound familiar if you've seen any of my other classes. Um, if you've seen, you might have heard some of this stuff in a couple of my classes because that that repetition, that that reinforcement is very very um, important so that you do remember that stuff when you're trying to cook something. Okay, so you're going to see a lot of stuff rolling forward that sounds very very familiar if you've seen any of my vids before or if you have been to a culinary school or anything like that okay let's see who's there anybody down there oh gosh we got lots of people there let's see Debbie good to see you Adrian Day you're there I saw your husband a minute ago Joel good to see you Lynn Letitia good to see you again Vincent there's another student go 